Hello, everybody. Uh, I think I'm privileged here, like, to conduct this session with you. And um, yeah, first of all, I just, I just want to ask uh, personally, um, I wonder what it feels like to have like global hits as a producer, because cause you've been um, you've been working as a producer like for a long time, and uh, of course we do know about your hits like Drake's or Kendrick Lamar's, but but you've been um, making beats not for the like commercial purpose, but your own, right? So I just wonder. In my experience, you know, producing, I think the main thing that's always kind of I keep in my, my mindset when I'm creating is always that I'm not really creating, like, for myself, but I have to always create um, from the sense of, like, what makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think usually when you kind of have that starting point when you create music or you know, writing music or anything that has to do with an emotion. You just have to know it has to connect to, to people. Um, so in doing so, I think it kind of makes you realize that, um, you know, you, 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 it, it connects to people. So to have records that, you know, people hear like in Korea or in, you know, any, any part of the world is really kind of crazy because right. I'm making it in my bedroom. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And... Uh, it's dope. It's really, it's really, mm -hmm. really, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want to start with um, the song uh, you produced. Was it like 2012 or something? Uh, no, I think that was 2000. And... No, it might have been 2010. 2000... 2010. 2010 wow. or 2011. One of the two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a song called My Type of Party by Dom Kennedy. Yeah. Like 2010, LA had like a really big buzz of like dope new artists, you know. Um, I had kind of started... Everything came as independence since then. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like LA had a new, it was called like, a, like the New West. Um, you had like artists like um, Blue. Uh, Pack Div, um, you and I, uh, Jack Davy, like there was a bunch of really dope artists, and so you know, for me as a producer, before then I was always trying to you know send my records or beats out to um, big artists. Like I was like, yo, I want to try to get on Fifty Cent, I want to try to get on you know Eminem, but you know in that scheme of like producing, like it's really hard to to connect with those artists because you don't know them. Right. Um, so at the time, I just said, yo, I, I moved back to L.A. Because I was living in the, uh, San Francisco at the time. I moved back to L.A. And I started producing, just, you know, meeting people in that, that time frame where everybody was just working with each other. So um, the way I got connected with Dom was actually through um, a like from Pac Div was like, hey, man, you, sh you should work with this dude, Dahi, uh, you know, get in the studio, send some beats and, you know, kind of vibe. So. My type, the my type party beat. Actually, um, I was sitting in my 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 dorm room because I was working at a at a school, and I was just making a bunch of beats and ideas. And so, uh, I went to I went to like the next week or so. I went to Dom's studio, and we all kind of sat in a room and everybody's chilling, hanging out. And you know, I think Dom already had the hook my type of party written, but he didn't actually have a beat to it. So. I went in there, played him a beat, and he just started rambling his rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it just kind of went from there. Um, and it was it was kind of a crazy record too because at the time the tempo was so slow. You know what I'm saying? Even as a DJ, you probably tell like it was a slower tempo, but it was almost like a new halftime y type of groove. Right. Where people were kind of like just right, right, right. A slow yeah, bounce. Yeah. For me as a DJ, there was a start point of like recognizing the whole new generation of like. Um, West Coast sound, yeah, they're compared to like nine, the typical 90s production or something. So, yeah, that was, that was like, that was, that's a good memory for me. Yeah. Yeah. Having recognizing the whole new sound, a whole new scene, discovering the whole new movement. Uh, yeah, going back to the day one, I've heard 
on, a, on an interview, I've heard you, you're not allowed to like, listen to like, rap music growing up, right? Yep. Is that true? Yeah, well, growing up, um, I couldn't listen to any like, curse words with rap. Um, the only rap music I listened to was Christian rap. Okay. So we used to have a bunch of Christian rap artists that we, my mom used to What? only let me play. And, uh, and it was, I mean, it was kind of a thing where I, you know, I didn't, I think growing up, I, I was always into music. Like I've always had instruments in the house and played music. And um, I listened to a lot of like, because I started playing um, like in a band, like, you know, marching band and, and um, uh, like classical band uh, in middle school. And then from there, I went up into high school and just played, you know, the saxophone. So I was always, always listening and studying music, reading music and stuff. Um, but I couldn't, rap music was like a thing where like I knew it, but I didn't, I didn't like really know it. You know what I'm saying? Like the main thing I would know was the beats. You know what I'm saying? The beats were always the one thing that attracted me the most. Um, but yeah, I couldn't, I was, it was illegal in the house. Like I would, I would get, I would get my ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. I listened to some rap music. Um, with that, I just, I wonder like which music or which kind of like music style was your first impression Like, and uh, I was told you were, you were into a lot of, like, uh, alternative and grunge rock type yep. of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, well, in the 90s, like, the late 90s to, like, like, 95 to, like, 2001, whatever, you had a lot of, like, these dope one-hit wonder, like, rock bands and a lot of dope alternative bands. And, um, and I just always, I was always a fan of just... alternative music because I, I love the textures of the voices and the guitars and and um did it affect a lot like regarding your production oh yeah all day all day i mean i think when i look for when i look for samples or i look for melodies right right i'm always looking for yeah i'm just asking this because uh when i first got a chance to hear your production on kendrick lamar's like classic track money trees mm -hmm. i i recognize this Beach House sample, yeah. and that was, that was like mind blowing. So, um, so the funny thing about that record is, I remember, um, I had w e n t to Coachella, okay. uh, the first year K Kendrick performed. Oh, so I remember Kendrick performed at Coachella, and I remember seeing him perform. In my head, I was like, I was praying, I said, Yo. I got to get a track with Kendrick Lamar. I, I just, I was like, that's my, one, that's my one thing I want this year. Like, I got to work with this guy. Like, this dude is going to be the future. You know, I just, I just knew it. So I remember the next week, I just sat in the studio, my, my little home studio. And um, I, think my, I think I got the sample from a friend of mine who was just sending me all these, like, alternative records and just went out and then, so... When I got the Beach House sample, I was like, oh, this is really dope. Um, and I was like, yo, let me just try experiment the sample. And I just reversed it and then put it through, you know, some turns and a couple effects and stuff. And I just made a track. And then I think maybe a week or two later, I think Kendrick heard the record. And then uh, I think I got a call from my friend. was like, yo, like Kendrick already wrote to it. Come by the studio. So... I went to Carson, where the, the infamous Top Dog Entertainment Studios is. Uh, and me and Soundwave and Kendrick were all in the studio together. And he played it for me. And I was like, yo, this is like a really crazy track. Because I, you know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a hybrid of like so many different sounds of like, you know, kind of like a, almost like an outcasty type of vibe with the, with the melody and the bounce and the, and the drums. But also the music is very like alternative. It's like you know, it's it's a, it's a very vibey record, and I think I think it's going to be one of his like you know standout records that he'll always play because it's it's just it was so different. And um, yeah, I think it's it's probably to this day it's probably like my favorite track that I've done because I think it just has a lot of it's like the beginning, you know, for for my career, but also to his career, kind of like you know really starting to shoot up. So. Many people say that Drake and Kendrick Lamar are opposite and comparing like and contrasting things in common. 
and differences. I'm curious as a producer who has worked with both of them, what are your opinions on that? I think I think they're both different artists. I think Drake Drake is one of the artists I think he's 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 one of the greatest artists of the times because he's he knows I guess his, his importance in the culture and he's always been able to like be ahead of the game and kind of know where to turn and where to go and I think you know you know he's really the I mean he's really you know he's he's a product of like Kanye West's you know 808s and heartbreak you know what I'm saying when that album came out I think Drake that created a new lane in music right, where right. you can sing and rap and you know Drake Drake just one of the artists I think he just He's he's he, he he's evolved into something else that's different. Kendrick is an artist where like, you know, I I haven't worked with anybody as creative of just the way he thinks about music and the way he like writes and, and pens things and um, Kendrick usually has a song in his head before he even like hears a beat. He just kind of knows in his mind is this we're gonna and then the beat is really just the just a platform for him to actually write them. So and I think he just you know he's he's a lyricist you know what I'm saying he's a very into right, his right. rhyme so in some ways it's like both of them it's hard to kind of try to pin them against each other because they kind of do totally different things but I think they're the best at what they do so yeah yeah uh, I think it's about time to point out the diversity in like the rap scene yeah here so like everything from commercial to underground to like like so-called mumble rap I think uh, what do you think about like this um, like new generations of rap music right now uh, I as think, a producer and, uh, I think as a producer um, I think well first of all I, I just think that the music in general is in, is in another it's another genre I wouldn't seem to say it's like quote unquote hip hop music like it's, it's its own um, category of music because it's 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 so melodic it's so like you know it's almost like a trap beat is a very it's a part of the thing so that's a whole genre of like the music you know so in some ways it's not i don't really, i don't i personally don't get mad about it i, I kind of like try to understand it try to see what what's fresh what's hip about it why do you like it um a lot of it reminds me a lot of the music reminds me of like like i say little uzi vert reminds me of like blink 182 Mm -hmm. Or it reminds me of right. of like good um, like good Charlotte. It's just like these really dope like '90s rock bands that used right. to, but very melodic, very hook driven, and even the aesthetic, the way they look, like it's like they're like rock stars, you know. So in some ways, it's just it's just different, you know. what I'm saying I think it's I think you just got to have a balance of like everything, and I think sometimes we just get in a point where like. Everybody's on this side of the of the room, right. but we have to find other artists who can do something different and can stand. And it makes it makes hip hop seem a little bit stronger and diverse because there's a lot of different categories, you know. Yeah, and uh, you've done a lot of like co work, right? Say it again. You've done a lot of like co work, co production work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And collaboration in production now seems like a natural situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you collaborate with? like other producers who are like completely different from you um um usually when i when i co-produce records now i kind of look at it more like a band so if i'm making a record with someone i kind of take the role of like well let me do the drums oh, okay or let me do the melody because i think sometimes if you kind of take a role, it makes it easier for someone to kind of like vibe with that and you just kind of bounce off each other. I've, I've been in rooms where like, you know, if you're producing and everybody's trying to be the one to like press the button or everyone's trying to be the one to like show off, it kind of it kind of messes up the vibe, you know? So for me, I kind of take a step back or if someone needs me to lead the, the production, I'll, you know, start the idea and then we'll try to build. So... But I think it's cool. I mean, I think I think it gives you longevity because you can't do everything by yourself. And if you kind of know in your head, like, you know, there's some times that I run out of ideas or or I'm only listening in a certain way. But if someone plays me something cool, I'm like, oh, that kind of opens up a new way of thinking about the song. So 
in some ways, um, co-production, I think, is really dope. And you just got to be open, you know? I mean, the main thing is about is the vibe. Like, as long as me and you have a, have a good communication where we can say, say to each other, this is cool, this is not cool, or this can go, I think it kind of helps the vibe of the song. And the song is the most important thing. It's not about me. It's not about the other person. It's about the song. So, yeah, and of course you've done a lot of like classic rap records as well. But uh, you've done a lot. Of, you've been contributing a lot of production side for uh, some pop sides as well, like Madonna. And uh, do you find any like differences between like those works? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the pop world is is a totally different beast. Uh, and I think it's different because I think it's I think in some way it's well sometimes the the main difference is that most songs are written already before the beat is even made. So if you're if you're writing songs, somebody's write songs to a piano or a guitar or uh, to you know like they write the song out and then. The production kind of comes later because you 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 can add the production and so a lot of times you know it's kind of like classic songwriting you know like you, like a lot of country songs are made that way where someone writes a song plays it out and then you know they'll hire a producer to produce the record rap is like yo play me the beat and and so it's for me it's actually it's actually it taught me a lot about um, how I want to approach rap now because. I would love to, that's why I don't really, nowadays I don't really make a lot of beats, just make a bunch of beats and send it to someone. Usually I'll have a session and I'll just kind of figure out what the vibe is of the artist and what they're looking for and then I'll just make something there on the spot. So, but I'll have a bunch of ideas that, they, that you know, they might vibe with or like and stuff and that kind of, I can build from there. Um, so the, but it, I, I learned that doing pop sessions because a lot of times, you know, People, they, uh, a lot of uh, pop people or pop artists like to write to chords and they'll play to that and then it just makes it easier. It, it doesn't make it, the production sometimes makes it a uh, little bit too busy for the artist to write the right. songs to. So in a lot of ways it's, you learn that. Um, and yeah, it's just a different, it's just a different beast in regards to just the, um, you know, how songs are written, you know what I'm saying? It's a, right. it's. Yeah, what about the uh, difference between vocals and rappers? You've done a lot with like R&B musicians as well. Yeah. So, um, Vocalists... Well, sometimes you need to rearrange like the whole like keys and like yeah. <clears throat> and the whole song structure for the vocalists as well. Yeah, I mean this. Well, I'd, I'd say for in general, like you know, vocal producing is a is a totally different. It's a beast, you know. It's a totally different, you know. It's a skill. It's a totally different skill that you have to learn, because um, a lot of times when you're vocal producing, um, you really have to capture the moment. So you have to say like, you know, we have to do these many takes to record a song, and then if you record a song, someone's like. Ah, that sucks. Uh, go back and do it again, or I'll just take that part and comp it to something else. Um, so, in a lot of ways, you, you're working on that side, and then also too, you know, with singers, you, you know, it's it's a little bit, um, it's it, you know, sometimes the 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 singer has to uh, sing to what the songwriter wrote. So sometimes the singer is not not the one who writes the song. So you work on the song with a songwriter and then the singer comes in to sing that song. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that's a bit different. Rappers go in there, they mumble some blah, 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 and then they'll just comp and then they'll take it. So it's a little bit more, more time spent with vocalists. Um, but I think in a lot of ways, you just, as a producer, your number one job is to capture the best performance. Mm -hmm. Because if, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you have to know when to capture the moment and then for the other artists to, you know, so they'll feel comfortable and they know the song is good. It's like, that's, you're supposed to make the song great, you know? Yeah, let's take a listen to other, um, another favorite track. Oh, 
I just wonder uh, if you have any like uh, your own your own approach uh, regarding collecting samples or something. Uh, I mean it's funny because so it was a it was a while I stopped sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much after I did but like when I did Money Trees, uh, you realize that you don't you don't make a lot of money sampling. Uh, because you take they'll take a big part of your publishing, right? And you're like, oh, oh shit, I, I ain't making no money, so <laughs> I have to like you know find new ways of sampling. Um, so uh, my my approach to sampling now is is really um, trying to trying to listen to a lot of reference records, like listen to a lot of samples, listen to a lot of records, and then. I'll just create my own samples. So, and then I'll, you know, or I'll, or I'll have like people who make dope samples mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll, I'll collab and make beats off of that. So uh, it's, it's just a different way. It's like, you know, it's, it's really just a way to kind of like get around the idea of sampling, but, but still use it because there's a certain technique that you do when you sample that you don't do when you're not sampling. Because it's, it's the way you chop a record, the way you get a groove, the way you can rearrange a record. Right. It kind of allows you to like new ideas. So I still sample. I think I just either sample myself or I'll sample uh, uh, a lot of like new ideas or, you know, something that, that someone gives me. So, um, but I still love it. Like I, I still collect samples. I still chop samples just to get an idea, and then yeah. I'll you know change it to point. Which program do you use, uh, like making beats? Say again. Which program do you oh, use? Oh, uh, Ableton Live. That's the main thing, or yeah, Ableton, uh, Ableton Live is it's the future. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I only I, I I only use I used to be on uh, uh, Logic. Um, and then I I think I got an Ableton. Maybe in 2000 and probably like 2012. No, no, no. 2013 or 2012, I remember. Yeah, 2013. Because my friend uh, Blood Pop, he's a really dope producer. Um, he's the one that showed it to me. And then from there, I just started just building. And it's, it's crazy. Ableton is the best. I don't care what anybody can say. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what makes it like so unique? You think uh, the the workflow or like interface or? It's what I love about Ableton is I've never worked on a program where everyone uses it differently, but they can work fast. Um, like you can, you just have to kind of look at Ableton Live as a. If you can make a wish list of what you want to do, production. Oh, okay. There's a way you can do an Ableton, like if that makes sense. Like you can, you can customize it to your liking, um, because of. It just makes you think about music differently. If that makes sense, I don't know if that really makes sense, but if you, if you. St I would just I'll give you this tip. If you kind of look at both windows and like the one the arrangement view and then the and then the clip view, there's just a lot of things you can do that if you think about the way you organize your music or the way you organize your ideas, that's what it's for. It's really about an idea generator, you know what I'm saying? And but again, I'm going to use it totally different than how you're going to use it and that's dope, you know what I'm saying? Cuz you're going to do something that I'm like, "Oh, that's dope." But I have a way of the way I wake, I make music that I know I can work fast in Ableton, and it just it it's helped me actually. Like I said, I can make beats on the fly. I don't have to like make a bunch of just beats. I just make I can collect ideas and stuff. So yeah, but no, and I know I don't I haven't seen another program that does it like that. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you make like melody lines first, then or like drum lines first? It depends. It depends. Um, the way I kind of look at it is parts. So I'll make a bunch of drum ideas. I'll make a bunch of melody ideas. I'll make uh, I'll I'll make voice notes to myself. Um, I'll chop an idea and then I'll just play it for someone. Because I, 
the thing the thing I've learned about, I guess when you're in when you do a lot more sessions, it's really, I guess you have to kind of make, you kind of have to go on on the fly, kind of have to work on the fly because it all depends on if you're the artist. I got to figure out what mood you're in. So for me, it's like I try not to. I try to find space in my records. So just for you can have your idea, so you know it. Like okay, so. I'll play you a bunch of melodies, and you'll be like, oh, I like that one. All right, cool. What type of groove you want? Oh, you like that groove? All right, cool. So I try to start the record off, uh, off the melody first, um, usually, because that makes it easier for someone to write to. Because sometimes drums lock into a certain right. rhythm, right, right, right. and you can't move out of that rhythm. Um, but if you find the melody that's open and somebody can write to it, I think that's a good place to start when you're uh, creating songs. Do you have any like? Uh, oh, actually, I think um, you've done a lot of like newcomers albums as well, right? Uh, like Logic's first album and mm -hmm. Mick Jenkins mixtape. Yep. And uh, you've worked with a lot of like newcomers uh, or so to say rookies, right? Yeah. You seem to have a good eye for uh, like new musicians, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about like? Do you have any um, your own your own like viewpoints or like set on? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, usually with artists, you kind of have to if you when you're looking for new artists, you have to kind of just go with your gut feeling. If that makes sense, because. You don't know if it's gonna sell. You don't know if it's gonna be good. You don't know if it's gonna like if anything is gonna happen. But a lot of times, it's all about like if you believe in the artist, you know. Like, uh, and even when I first heard like when I first heard uh, Logic, um, I just knew he could really rap. Like I, I I knew he was like really good at lyric. Like like lyrically, he was like he could really 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 rap. So I was like, okay, that's dope. And so we got in the studio and we kind of vibed and, and, and worked. And you know, I didn't, and, and I didn't really know how big his his like his growth was as and and with artists and how he's built like a really strong base with um, his fans. Like that, he has a lot of core fans that really love his stuff. Um, and I was I was like, oh wow, like I I think I didn't know it was this big. And so it just kind of kept building and building. And now you know, he had a number one uh, album that so you know. You know, two hundred thousand copies the first week, and that's you know that's that's great for him because he's really built his own lane. Um, but I, I I say this you know really to like all artists and producers and stuff like I think the 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 great the the best thing is like you know you, when you believe in something before someone else does, it kind of it's just more rooted and it's it's just, it it it's more powerful and it's more beneficial for your in your career you and your career because you know most people don't know why they like what music they listen to it's because right. it's because either the dj plays it finds it like common things yeah exactly or your friend likes it or you know most guys don't whatever the the ladies are dancing to that's what the that's what the guys are going to like you know so in that concept of just making music it's always important to be like just know why you love what you like and where your tastes come from. And then when you do that, it allows you to, you know, just believe in something when somebody else isn't, you know? And I try to, I try to do that as much as I can, you know, because, you know, it's always just ups and downs when it comes to just somebody being really popular and then somebody down here that no one knows about is like the next thing. But if you don't see that, you know, you might miss the whole boat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's a good approach uh, from the uh, DJ's point of view, uh, does it? Uh, you did you like? When did you start DJing? DJing? I started DJing in college. Mm -hmm. um, I was like eighteen. Okay. Like se seventeen, eighteen. Mm -hmm. I bought my first turntables. Right. I, I bought the uh, belt drive turntables. You know the little, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the cheap one. Um, and then I just started. I bought. Um, I think the first record I bought was um, High Technology, uh, High Tech's uh, Rockets record. Yeah. That was my first record I bought. And then I just, it, but I also, my dad had a bunch of records, so I took his soul records and I used, like, you know, 
Um, but I learned with DJing was super dope is that um, I think you just when you play music for people, like you just you can you can read people's body language and moods and like you kind of go off of that and then you just kind of keep progressively growing into the next song or things and also to just how songs are made like just the 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 sequence of a of a song from the hook to the to the verse um that just always stuck sticks in my mind so when i dj or when i produce i kind of go back and forth of just like what would this sound like in this environment cuz the environment is very important to your listening you know cuz people like to say oh they don't i don't like the migos or I don't listen to this stuff, but when you're in a club, you just turn it up, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's, it's, it has the energy. So I think even in LA, like LA is a huge car culture. So when people listen to music, most of the time they're listening in their cars. So when you drive and you got, it, you, got your, you, got your, you got your sub in the back and you got, you know, it's banging and you're going through the streets, that's, that's when you play the music the most. In New York, people are walking down the street in their headphones or in the subway. Um, that affects your listening. Um, so it's just environments, you know. The, the environment is going to make you make a certain type of music um, that is going to create a sound. And DJing and producing, they kind of go hand in hand and just knowing, like, what the people so, like. So do you think your DJ career affected your production work as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I kind of... I stopped, I stopped DJing probably, probably, I mean, like, kind of, like, consistently DJing, um, probably when I was, like, 20, 23, 24, and I just kind of really focused on production. Um, but now it's funny, like, I'm trying to go back more into DJing because I think it's just fun and you get to connect with the people more. Um, but it, it, it was a huge step. Like, it was it really taught me a lot about um, just energy and mood and flow. And um, it, it's, it's constantly changing, so you have to, you have to know when to, to kind of ride the wave and, and move it and, and, and step off or get back on. Um, produ producing is kind of like the same way where, you know, you just have to keep evolving and you have to keep your ears open and you have to keep your your the moment is all it, the the I always believe like the best song I'm gonna make is gonna be the next one. So I'm always kind of like, oh, what's that? What you like? What you like? Oh, let me listen to what you like. Oh, that's dope. You know, it's just it changes. You know. Yeah, for me, DJing is kind of the best way discovering like music and people and feelings, moods and inspirations. So I always um, recommend my like fellow producers or musicians to be a DJ. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, talking about like attitude as a producer, what do you think, what do you think is the right attitude for an artist and a producer? Because uh, I see a lot of like producers are, especially in hip hop and rap music, they're like behind the scene, right? So sometimes I wonder, um, if they have right spot in the music industry sometimes. So I always want to uh, tell them to have your own attitude regarding that. Um, well, it's funny. I think, I think we're in a very interesting time for the producer because the producer is becoming the artist a lot of times now. Like there's a... Like a, a lot of producers I've been noticing are like DJing or getting, you know... Um, festival gigs by, you know, playing their own music or, you know, um, or just DJing, you know, like a Cashmere Cat is a, is a friend of mine and I see him like, he produces for a lot of really, you know, big pop artists and some rap artists, but he'll go and tour and DJ and have his own category of music. So I think it's a good time to be able to kind of like do the artist and producer thing where people are into production, like just the beats, not even like lyrics on the beats. And that's a huge asset for you, like your career and you can go. Um, but I think also too, it's like you, you, you just have to know how to balance too, because I think, again, for me at least, what, the way I look at it, like I don't,
when it's when it comes to the song, all I care is about is the song. I don't really care if I'm like the face of the song or I'm in the video or I'm then I'm more like I just want to make the song great. And if I if I sing something on the song and they keep it, cool. If they don't, whatever. But I think it's more about your approach to the music and also to like, you know, that people like to work with you. Um, because a lot of times I think people kind of The biggest thing in the industry, like you have to, you, you can't be an asshole. You just, you have, people have to be able to be like, oh, I really like working with that person or that person gives me good energy and good vibes. And then from there, it kind of grows into the next situation and your right. reputation grows. And because and, a lot of times, like I, for me, for example, like I know a lot of dope producers or, or people who make beats, but you know, I don't like to be with them in the studio. Like I'm just like, no, nah, you kill you kill my vibe, or no, nah, you're not cool, or it's just like whatever. So, really, it's just like just being able to have the space to create and and be open to ideas and and not try to be a know it all, but in some ways, like you know, let the flow of the let the flow of the session grow. Let your let I like just be on the on the on the go thinking wise. Don't be like stuck in this particular moment. You know, like just know that anything can change. Um, the biggest thing I've learned too is like um, every song's a, a, a demo before it actually comes out. So no song is really done until somebody's selling it at Best Buy or at uh, on Apple Music. Like it's it's not done until it actually comes out. So you know, even like with the Kendrick album, we <laughs> literally that we we worked to like the very last like day before the album even like dropped because it was like that's so much time like we put into it and you just kind of like you don't know but overall i think it's that approach if you keep that your that mindset open you know it can get you far yeah um i think yeah talking about kendrick lamar's album i think this is the most question when you were working on album damn could you tell us uh, what, was, what the mood was like and how did it like, um, how like those people work together? Um, working on Dam was uh, really, it, it became a real f like family environment um, just in the sense of um, um, the fact that everybody in the room really cared about the the music and no everybody's egos were like checked at the door um and i think kendrick had a really a lot of trust in me and soundwave um you know we like mike will um danny keys it was just dope because a lot of times we we all kind of took the approach of I'll, I'll do the drums, you do the sample, or you have this idea, let me come and finish it, or um, yo, can you bring in this person, I brought this person, that person did a good job. So it was an environment where it was like everything I did or everything we did, you know, it was all for the album and the, and the project and it, it made it so much better because nobody came into the door like... I'm trying to be the star like I'm like you know I'm trying to be the big producer or I'm trying to um, shine on the track it was like what's what's going to make the song the best and so everything was built from the scratch in the studio right yeah every all the beats for on the album were all in the studio like there was maybe one or two tracks that somebody actually sent that got on the album but everything else was like in the studio. We all made it there. We we had an idea and we just built it, um, and that was that was great because that's to me that's a real that's a that, that was a, a dope experience because you everything becomes like synergy, everything becomes one. It's not like t 14 different tracks. They all kind of like tie to each other, even though they sound a little different. They all have a real tie to each other, and so. I think that was really a dope environment and I hadn't really been in that environment um, other than the time I worked with No ID on um, Vince Staples album and so and that just kind of back and forth and 
you know, you you play a track, I play a track, or you have an idea, and we just keep building, keep building, and um, and I think the the the, the best thing about the whole album is that a lot of it was kind of came from just having us conversations about life and being able to like look at life and try to make sense of where the world at world is at right now and trying to really figure out damn like how do you how can you make a song that is people can enjoy but you're not preaching yeah you know what i'm saying you, you you're, you're trying to put people to mood and but you're not trying to tell them don't do drugs or you know watch your drinking or do you know all this kind of preachy stuff is more about like yo just just enjoy life and know where you're at but also too just know that you know you have a purpose and this is you know there's a bigger power than who you are and you have to kind of remember that so um but yeah this conversation is just like sitting in the studio and just talking you know um it kind of built the album into something that was like kind of unique for the purpose of just like everybody in the room is like there for a purpose you know like there wasn't a bad energy in there that was like beautiful thanks for the great album though i think it's about time to have a little q a session hey what's going on um i have two questions um first one is uh can you tell us about like any like really kind of difficult sessions you had but ended up with like a dope like the best thing you know, like a banger and then all right um difficult sessions that turned out to be good songs like like in regards to maybe even the artist being difficult to work with or or you guys can't just can't figure out you can't crack that nut like um I mean there's been records like for example I'll give you one example so and it it wasn't the artists were difficult but I didn't know what they liked or it the communication wasn't really there. So I remember when I did um uh Drug Dealers Anonymous for Pusha T and Jay-Z. So I was in the studio with Pusha T and I'm you know making the beat and I didn't I didn't actually know he liked the beat while I was making it. I was just kind of like in there making stuff and like you know sometimes I just go off your your facial reaction so I'm making a beat and da 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 and then if he's just kind of quiet sitting in, in the corner chilling and then all of a sudden he just leaves the studio he just leaves the studio and I'm just sitting there like and, and his manager's like yo this is dope this is dope I'm like I don't know this you know I don't I'm just making a beat and cool takes it and then I left the studio thinking like man this shit's whack man I'm, I'm about to go I guess when I'm, I'm out and then I get a call you know a month l later and he calls me he's like hey man like I got one we, we got this record it's really crazy we about to put Jay-Z on it I'm like oh shit. all right cool this is dope you know so he called and he put Jay on the record and it's like you know it just kind of takes off from there so I think it was it was cool because you you don't you don't know you know sometimes you don't know like you think it's dope but again like i'm a person that kind of just i don't necessarily i'm not married to one idea so if you want to change it you can but sometimes i just want to kind of know what you're thinking and so i didn't know i didn't i you know when i made the beat like i didn't know but you know it kind of turned out dope so um but there's been sessions where you know you know it's almost a waste of time because the person is not focused on writing the song or kind of getting it. it's more like yo come play some beats and then i'm like i'm like yo this is not good like i feel like i'm i'm kind of getting set up for failure you know what i'm saying it's kind of like oh shit what am i doing you know what i'm saying because i don't know what the situation is i'm going into so um but overall i think you just have to i think the the biggest thing i can say is going in the studio is like just come prepared as much as you can um don't you got to kind of think a little bit more open and kind of at least try to ask the person can i listen to some songs so you, you can kind of figure, figure out what somebody likes but overall you know you never know but there was some good some good and bad ones um my second question is like you know you work with all these like you know legends and all that and like you know there's levels to the shit so like how what's your willingness to work with like unknown artists 
Oh, all the. I mean, I'm about it all day. Like, if, if a person is dope and they have like a really unique sound and something that I think that's they stand out, I'm always open to like working with new artists. I'm always looking for new artists. Um, and I think I'm open to development. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I want to, you know, have my own artists and promote them and get them on, and because um, that's going to help. You know. You know the legacy of all the music I'm working on and people, so I'm super open to it. So, my bad, but uh, I don't want to hog the mic. But just to piggyback real quick off that last one, um, like, who puts you on to new artists, or do you look? Um, I have a lot of really good friends who are like A and R's and you know managers, and so I'll get, I just get hit up like, yo, like this is new artist you should check out. They'll send me an email link to their music. And I'll hit them back, yo. I like this person. Can you bring him to the studio? And then we'll just kind of, kind of vibe and write. So a lot of it's just like, I don't really sit on the internet myself and like search for a lot of music. It's really just me. Um, somebody introducing me to this artist, and then from there I kind of, I kind of build it off. So I just have, I just trust people's, my friends' ears, and I'm like, yo, I think if they think it's dope, it's probably dope, you know. Uh, you told me you're the Ableton Live is the future. Ableton Live is the future using the Ableton Live. Uh, I, I'm one of the users of the Ableton Live. Can you tell me your tip of the Ableton Live? You, because you told me you're customizing the Ableton Live. So you know in the, um, the clip view, right? So. Is that session view or Sesh, uh, session view, arrangement view? Session view is that, which one is it? The clip view is the clips, the little small yes, clips. Yes, yeah. yes. So the clip view, you have to think of the clip view as ideas. So you can record a bunch of dope drums and loops and songs and whatever, and you can save it as a, as a idea a bank, a library, yes, exactly. Yes. So I save a bunch of just small ideas I'll, I'll spend a day of just, I'm not even making full songs, I'm just making ideas, making ideas, making ideas. And I'll throw them in this thing. And so when I do sessions, I'll go in into the thing and, I, and I'll just play little I ideas, guess. not full songs. Um, and it helps me organize like my, my thoughts a little better because I don't, I don't have to, I'm not forced to make a full song at one time. I can get 20 ideas in. I see. 20, like 20, 30 minutes, and I can come to the session and kind of know like, oh, so you want some Jingle Bell Christmas songs. So I'm gonna go here and pull down these, these little things that maybe is kind of cool. So it just, it just allows you to kind of organize your thoughts a little bit, but also to um, save them as almost templates and knowing that, you know, from anything, from any sound, textures, whatever, like it's just, and, and even in that, you can, you can even, you can do some crazy, crazy organizing flips that it's going to take me a long time to explain. But over time, you know, it's, it's kind of a really cool thing to weigh, uh, you know, even the way you can chop in the simpler, with the, with the simpler thing and chopping samples and stuff, like, it's, it's super fast. Like, I don't, I can chop ideas in, like, one minute you know and i just learned different ways to do it but the clip view for sure save your ideas and then you can use them in the song later yeah sounds pretty easy which is not actually <laughs> it, it, yeah it takes it just takes time to kind of learn it what, what it's for you know because think oh i'll say last thing think of the um the, the reason why ableton people use a lot of ableton live for like live shows is because you can organize a bunch of songs in one session, or you can do like a master session of, of clips and, and stems and stuff. And then when you go, so it's really, that's why I think Ableton Live gets get used so much because you can put so many ideas in one session. And so you can kind of look at it like, you can, you can remix stuff, you can add stuff by just trying the different clips and changing stuff and, and going back and forth. But they're all little small ideas, you know? So you can kind of look at it like a way of like, organizing all the all these song ideas you have and just put them into one song you know thank you mm -hmm. thanks for the um lecture first of all mm -hmm. and um i think you answered my 
um, question a little bit already, but um, I've got two questions. One is, um, so from looking at your resume, I can on only assume that um, you have a good relationship with um, different, so many artists, like you've worked with Madonna, you've worked with Kalila, you've worked with um, a lot of rappers and such and such. So um, question number one is, um, how do you keep your relationship with the fellow musicians and artists? Um, well, a lot of it is just, I think, I try to get in the studio with the artists and then from there, it just makes it a little bit easier to have like an actual friendship and like know that, you know, people actually like, like you as a person and, you know, you guys connect and it's really, it, it just makes it easier to like really build a chemistry with someone and you, over time, over time, you just kind of know like what they like or what they listen to and, um, I think over over time, you know, for, for me, like I, I think I only I, I try to only work with artists that I really like to listen to their music. You know, what I'm saying I really I'm a fan of it, and um, and even if it's different from what people would think I'm a, I like, like I just try to you know communicate with them and like yo, I really like your music, or maybe we should try this direction, or what do you want to do? And I think over time, usually people kind of know that I'm again I'm. I have I just got good energy. I try to have good energy and 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 with people and um I go I I usually you know you, I just call people up and see how you're doing and you know just like what you've been listening to what you on or you know you just have a good conversation and I think you you know a lot of times I don't even sometimes I won't even start the session with music. I just, just we'll talk for like 30 40 minutes an hour just like what's going on with you like well, how's life and so that always helps the relationship start to something where it's not like play some music, play some music. It's like, yo, like what you eat, what you eat for breakfast today? Just simple things, you know? That's dope, man. I, I guess that was um, my question. Um, so do you text them a lot? Do you call them a lot? Like, you know? Oh, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't do it all the time, but I think it just, sometimes. It ain't, yeah, just sometimes you just, you just build, you know, a good relationship where you guys, you know, talk about life in general and that's always, that's always helpful, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not just like, you never want to be like the guy who's like, I'm just trying to sell you something, you know what I'm saying? You kind of want to be like, yo, oh, I got this idea. You, I, this, I think this could be dope, you know? So you just got to be genuine, you know? Try yeah. to really be genuine. Yeah, you don't want to be a spam mail, basically. No, no, <laughs> no. My second question is, um, so as a producer, sometimes um, you work with, you have a lot, bunch of sessions with artists and... Um, because like there, are, there must be so many different reasons. But like, let's say this artist is a superstar, and uh, this guy is super busy. Like, it's really hard to get a hold up, hold with him. Um, so it's really hard to seal the deal. You know what I'm saying? It's really yeah. hard to like get the song finished. Yep. So um, but you really um have a lot of songs done. So um, how do you do that? Do you um? Do you bug them a lot, or do you just simply p pray at night? Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. So, like, so like uh, me and ASAP Rocky, like, we're really good friends. Like, we, we hang out, and, you know, and I w I've worked with Rocky, like, a bunch of times. It's like, with Rocky, it's like his process of making music. It's like, he'll, he'll hold on to an idea we did, like, Three years ago, and he'll play it for me. I'd be like, "Man, I, I thought, I thought, I thought that was done. You weren't even using it." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I kind of with him, I kind of know that if I work with him, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but I think you kind of realize, you know, the process of him kind of like, you know, if I know I got like three days to work with him, I'd be like, "All right, cool." I'll just make these ideas. And then sometimes, too, it's like those songs, he may keep them, he may not keep them, but if he don't keep them, I got three good beats, and I can take it to someone else. And, you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't want them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I try not to, you know, I, if I made a beat for him, I'm going to give it to some. I don't do that because that kind of makes the situation a little bad. But, um, but a lot of times, you know, I try to just have a relationship where, you know, 
you know, if you want the beat, take it, hold it. I'll ask if you don't want it anymore, then I'll, you know, switch it. But there's been situations where, like, I thought this person was going to put it out, and I gave it to them, and then the album didn't come out, you know what I'm saying? And then you're just kind of like, damn, you know? So overall, again, it's just, I guess, tr just try to keep working every day and trying to keep doing because, again, everybody's timeline is so different, uh, and the process is different. So, um, but, you know, I, I just try to keep optimistic, you know, because, again, like, it, it sucks sometimes. You just don't know. I think it's because of your good energy. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I don't, it's, it's, all, it's all music, you know? Thank you. Mm -hmm. 네, 아까 그 다음 분, 네. 네, 여러 명이서 음악을 만들 때 이제 시간적인 문제로 인해서든 취향적인 문제로 인해서든 좀 의견을 일치시키기가 쉽지가 않은데 그럴 때좀 어떤 식으로 효율적으로 의견을 조율하거나 취합하는지 그런 노하우가 있는지 궁금합니다. Yeah, um, I think, well, I think um, for me, you know, I, I used to have a big problem where, you know, I would get stuck on one idea. Like I would just, I would never, I was too rigid, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I would spend a whole day making one beat, like just, I got to change the drum, I'm trying to get that. Um, and then... You know, I guess when I go into this, the situation or the, with the studio or the artist, you know, I'll have maybe five minutes to play, you know, or, you know, play a bunch of beats and be like, if they don't like none of the beats, and then it's like, okay, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of assed out. But now I think I try to, 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 to th it goes back to the idea of just making, I guess if you can balance the time of like, you got to balance the time of like living life, uh, being creative, and also to knowing like experience of kind of just keeping your ears always open helps you create more music. You know what I'm saying? I, is that make sense? Like it's like it's really like a. I try to uh, create from a standpoint of. Um, Music is not my only thing that I that keeps me al alive. You know what I'm saying? I try to like live and, and grow, and, and 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 in some ways, it's it's really just about me being being able to find the time to spend and be efficient in what I'm creating and making music and doing things. Um, and then when I'm with the artist, it's like knowing that I only have a certain amount of time, so I have to kind of be able to inspire that artist in that session and know like okay I it's my job to kind of keep the ship rolling because sometimes in a session the artist is like they just not focused they just like they might be there might be 20 women in the in the, in the studio and like people are drinking and, and getting high and hanging out and it's like I'm like hey how you doing I'm, I got I got some beats and but they're not paying attention you know so a lot of times it's like you have to kind of know when to be able to be like, okay, this is a waste of my time and I'm going to play this music or this person has my attention on, so I'm just going to leave, you know? So it's just like a, it's just, you just got to know what, what's your worth for your time and what you're doing and what you're creating because a lot of times when you're working with, you know, bigger artists, they might not be inspired as the new person who just wants to work hard and make dope music and you can create with them. What about the situation when you uh, need to balance with other producers' ideas when like collaborating with like other yeah. producers? Well, it's it's well, I, okay. I've been in a situation where like, you know, um, there's three producers and there's this big artist. And they have like all. Different taste of like their own style and all different tastes of those taste, style. Right? And there's some producers that'll be like, "Hey, look at me! Boom, 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 boom! I got the dopest beats." Da, 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 da. And that's cool, you know. For, but for me, I'm more of a laid back, try to like see what the situation is, and be like, "Okay, if we're supposed to collaborate together, I say, let's." Um, let's just do a jam session where you play something, I play 
something a part of that, and then this person plays another, you know, kind of keys. So, like, for example, when, when we did um, the Yah record for Damn, we were all in New York, and we were all just, like, in a session, and, you know, we were looking for, like, one more track, and, you know, at the time, we didn't, we were like, I don't know what we're going to make, so we sat in a room, all hung out, all hung out, and just, like, listened to music, and then... After we listened to a bunch of dope albums, we, we we got back and then we literally just had a like a really dope jam session. Like it was a live band where I was playing all drum breaks and then Soundwave is playing uh, some samples and then Danny is in there playing piano. And so we all just kind of like bounced ideas off each other for like, we, we made like, I swear we made like 30 beats in like, you know, two hours. Cause we just, cause we, because we just made, we just made music, you know, it wasn't about the, it wasn't about, again, like somebody trying to be the star of the show. It's just like, yo, like, let me bounce this idea for you. And then you sing something. And then Kendrick will jump on the mic and he'll start freestyling. And then you just start to build a cycle of ideas and ideas and ideas and ideas. And it kind of just keeps going. And then that's how we got Ya yeah, because we did the jam session. And, but we weren't playing beats, you know, but we all knew like, hey, like, I think you're dope. You know, I'm dope. Can you just play this one part and then I'll, I'll add that to it and just kind of just keep building like into a cycle where you actually made a song. It sounds like very ideal situation, but sometimes you, those ideas like fight each other like against yeah, it's, other producers' idea, right? Yeah, you don't, I mean, again, like I'm not, if I'm in a studio and I'm working with someone, I, I have to like them as a person and I have to, <laughs> I have to want to be around them. If I don't like that person, I'm leaving. Right. I'm out. I'm, I'm going. I'm just like, because it's a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, it's like, I'd rather, time is the most important thing to me. Time is like, it's so crucial because you don't, I guess you never can get caught up in the, the moment of the music or just the moment of like, I have to do this one record or this record has to be, um, the one, because a lot of and and sometimes with the with the business, the business gets bad, you know, because people are greedy or people are they want more or they feel like this is their their one big record, so they're gonna try to take as much as they can, and it's it sucks because it's like that energy messes up the music to me. So you know, when I work with somebody, sometimes there's situations that happen, but. I'm more like, if you really want it that bad, you can have it, but we may not work together anymore. Um, and yeah, it's just, collaboration is really all, all about energy and like the person is the vibe. Chemistry. Is like, chemistry, it's chemistry. Like, you know, yeah, it's just chemistry. It's just chemistry. When you're not in the studio, um, when you're all by yourself, not in the session with the artists, But at which point do you think you're really done working on an idea? Like, as before, you get it heard to the artists or, like... Usually for me, I don't, I don't, I try not to overproduce a record. Which means, like, putting a whole bunch of sounds and stuff in a record where it just makes it too much. Um... I just kind of have a point where, especially if I'm, if I'm writing, if somebody's like writing a song to a beat, I kind of will, will take certain things out the beat and just have the person write the melody or, or, or sing a melody or write lyrics to the song, and then I'll, I'll build it up later. Um, and I just kind of take that process of, of ideas and knowing that, again, like everything is not a full song until it comes out. So just try to try to think of music as space like people need to have as much space as possible to see themselves on the record you know sometimes i know i've made beats where i can tell it scared the artist away it's like too much going on it's like fire fireworks and and explosions and you know screams and shouts it's like what's it's too much so i kind of i just take stuff out and then i just kind of build it um I learned a lot, I really learned a lot of that from like Pharrell. Like Pharrell, I've never, I've never met Pharrell, but I, when I listen to his music, I kind of, he was very good at only having like five sounds in his songs. Like, he, you don't hear a lot of like, 
crazy textures. You really hear only like five or six unique sounds in the song. And then from there, it just makes it easier for the person to like sing on it or vibe or stuff. So I just, the, the, the biggest advice is say just like, you know, if you just imagine if you're going to sing on the record, can you actually sing on it? Is it too much going on? Is it just, or is it, is it, is it enough to inspire the idea to like come into a song? Because sometimes you just got to know when to stop and be like, okay, that's enough. I got I to kind of let people kind of sing on it. When you start to the bottom and what is, how to overcome your obstacles and what is your motivation? I think I had to get over, get over the, the fear of, of like trying to do something, like live my dreams, whatever. Like I, there was a point in time where I just didn't know, I didn't really know if I could produce music and if it was something that I can, you know, live off of or create. And, you know, it's, it's, to me, it was really, I had to sacrifice a lot in my life and time and people to kind of like really focus my energy into music. But it was all worth it because I think over time you realize, you know, you got to have the, the biggest thing you have to have is just the passion. And then that, that'll just guide you into um, places that you didn't, you never thought you would make it in. And it was, it was a good a lot of what motivated me to keep going was just having really um, great conversations with people who saw the time I put into the music and, and the, the energy that I had and they knew like, oh, you're going to make it because you, you kind of, you're not going to let anything stop your dream of it and you just believe in yourself. Um, and it kind of kept me going and, and even when I wasn't making any money, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't quit my job, job until, you know, I didn't probably quit. I was still working a full-time job until Worst Behavior came out. Yeah, I was working at a school. I was still working, 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 nine to five, you know, just making beats when I got home. And I was just, I was just saving money, just saving money, saving money. And then I got to the point where I was like, okay, I can actually live off the music because... You know, financially it was okay, but over time it was like, it was cool because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't worry about the money. I just, because I didn't depend on music to pay me. I just was like, yo, I just want to make the best stuff. And then and from there it kind of just grew into um, me actually like starting to build off that. So overall it's just like, it's, it's um, believing in yourself and believing in your dreams, but also too like just fear is a very th- Fear is very, uh, it's the biggest hurdle because you, if you're scared to, to, to risk something, it kind of, you kind of limit it, it kind of stops you. So just kind of know that once you get over that, that fear and, and, you, and you're able to sacrifice your time, you know, you'll, you'll make it, you'll make it. And what was your second question? It was, uh, is that an answer? No, it's okay. Thank you for your answer. 곡을 이렇게 만들 때 어, 항상 뭐 누군가를 이렇게 염두에 두고 곡을 만드는지 아니면은 그냥 이제 뭐 개인이 이렇게 만들고 싶은 스타일만 유지하면서 만드는지 뭐 그런 거 있나요? Um, you know, actually, a, a thing I used to do, and I still do it today, is I actually, if I ever am by myself and I'm just making like a beat or an idea, Sometimes I just make a song to an acapella, just like a random, just like acapella from like, you know, a remix or stuff. And, um, and I'll just build around the song that way. And then so I'll know, okay, that's too much there or this melody fits here or take that. And you can kind of strip the idea out with um, whatever, you know, you could throw different vocals and see if it works. Um, and it actually helps me create um, more songs or I can write songs because it's all based on a melody or a chord progression. Um, sometimes if you try to make a song too specific to an artist and the artist doesn't want it, it's kind of, uh, it kind of hurts you because you just, <laughs> it's only for one person, you know? So, because I, I remember 
we used, I used to do these uh these writer camps. Like there was a writing camps for like Rihanna. So Rihanna, you do writing camps, and then you go there and you work with different songwriters. And so the songwriter who's the song the singer who's singing the song starts singing exactly like Rihanna, just like from the from the melody to the ideas, and it's dope. It's a dope song, but you you sung it just for Rihanna, so the song can't go anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't fit this person. So I try to be as open as possible with the song. I just write it a really great song, and then from there it'll grow into something bigger. But yeah, just like again, just try to um, make the song as open as possible because it can get too. If you focus just on one artist, it sometimes, you know, it works. But sometimes it works too because you're giving them what they need or you know that person like this sound. And so, you know, that usually happens when you're in the session with the artist and you after a amount of time, I know, oh, this beat is only going to really sound good with this artist. So it just depends. Off and on, you know, I try to be as open as possible. Thank you. 네, 또 혹시 또 질문 있으신 분 없으시면 저희 지금까지 수고해 주신 DJ 다이 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. Thank you.